Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. If you've ever looked in the Android App Store for camera apps, apps to take your video creation to the next level using your smartphone, you'll realize that there's way too many options out there for you. There's lots of good free options. There's really a heap of awesome paid options. My original list for this video, I started with 10, my top 10 apps. That's way too many. I've narrowed it down to four. In this video, we're gonna cover my top four recommendations for aftermarket or third-party video camera apps for Android. And I'm also gonna reveal what I feel is the best camera app as well. So we're gonna cover free options and paid options, so make sure you stay tuned. So very quickly, before we jump into the apps, why should you be using a third party or an aftermarket camera app for video when you're creating content using your Android device? The biggest reason is that you'll get full control over how the image looks. You won't have your light changing or your focus changing while you're actually recording. You'll get better quality, higher quality videos out in most cases. You just have full control over everything. So like I said, there's way too many options out there, but there is some really good solutions, both free and paid. So the one we're gonna start with is free. It is probably, not probably, it is in my recommendation, the best free option that you have for a third party or aftermarket camera app for video for your Android device, and that is Open Camera. Now, Open Camera is one that we recommended quite a while back in our video, how to create professional looking videos using your Android device. This camera app has come a long way since then. It was our pick back then, and it's still our pick for best free camera app on Android. It even beats out a lot of paid options. It's really easy to use, the results are fantastic, and it seems to support a huge range of Android devices and work really well. So while it does have an exposure lock setting so that your camera is not adjusting brightness while you're filming or moving around, it doesn't actually tell you the shutter speed that it's using. So not a deal breaker, still an awesome app, but that's probably the one thing I feel that it's missing. So moving on now to the remaining three, which are paid options or paid camera apps on Android. I'm gonna talk about these quickly based on their price or ordered by their price. So we'll start with the cheapest one first, which is Cinema FV-5 or FV5. Now this one sells in Australia for $2.99. Once again, you get full manual control. You've got awesome interface, easy to use interface. You get full control over your codec choice in this one, which I think is a cool addition. I really like that all your options aren't buried in menus and they're really easy to find on the actual dashboard. So once again, this camera app doesn't give you your actual shutter reading or your, your ability to adjust your shutter speed as you normally would on a DSLR or on a normal camera. But it does give you exposure lock so that you can lock down your exposure. And it's also got an anti-flicker mode so that you can reduce any flicker or eliminate any flickering from any lights that you may be using in your scene. The next app is Cinema 4K, and this one sells for $6.22. Now this one has, once again, a fantastic, easy to use interface, great results from the camera, but what this one has that the others don't is a flat color profile, which I think is really powerful. So that'll give you greater control and flexibility over your color grading and the look and feel of your video when you're in your editing software. And the last app is a really popular one and it's probably been around for the longest amount of time and that's Filmic Pro. And it sells for $13.99 Australian. Now this is an app that gives you, once again, full control over everything. It gives you image stabilization, it gives you bit rate control, it gives you all the same features from the others, but it does also support external hardware. So any lens adapters or even direct connection to the DJI Osmo Mobile and have full integration and control over your filming with that. So this app was one of the game changers when it first came out on iOS actually, for giving you full control over the cameras. And it led to people using this app to create things like documentaries and indie films to showcase the power of the cameras in our smartphones. I've probably spent the most amount of time using Filmic Pro over the other apps, but I think the biggest thing that all the other apps have over Filmic Pro is the interface. To go in and adjust settings and find settings, a lot of the settings are buried within menus, upon menus, and it's really hard to quickly get set up and shooting with Filmic Pro. The other thing is if you accidentally close the app or you press the home button on your phone and you open the app back up, a lot of your settings aren't saved. So it really can make it a hassle to use. Now Filmic Pro does have presets available, so you can save your settings, and that way when you close the app or open the app, you can load your presets and all your settings. In theory, 
in practice, I've never ever seen it work as it should. It'll save some of the settings, but not all of them. So while it gives you full control over everything and it gives you an awesome result, it's not a seamless interface, not a seamless workflow, especially compared to some of the other apps. So what's my pick or my recommendation? Clearly, if you don't wanna spend any money, then I would highly recommend that you use open camera because it's free. But not just because it's free, it's actually a really decent, really professional app. If you're looking to spend some money, I think it's definitely, definitely worth looking at Cinema 4K. That's an app that really surprised me and it's now my go-to camera app for Android. It's one that I feel that's definitely worth having installed on your Android device if you're looking for full manual controls, for an easy to use interface, for a huge amount of options and control and functionality, then that is my pick. You can always purchase the app, have a play around and hit the refund button if it's not for you. You can actually do that for all of the apps and I would probably recommend that you do so that you know that you're using the best app that's right for you and for your workflow. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure you click that subscribe button. If you were looking for the same video, but for iOS, then I've got a link on screen now to help you. Or if you're an Android user and you're looking to get the best results and create the best looking content videos that you can, check out the other video linked on screen. I'll see you soon.